That's pretty funny. Nice start to the show. Glassy, the producer, good for you for putting that together. It's pretty awesome. Well, golly gee, look who's back. It's old Bonzarelli. It's Bonzi Live. I'm tripping with Bonzi on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all that nonsense, whatever you subscribe to. We are live from Hamilton, Ontario, only here for a couple of more weeks, not even like 12 days. It's been enough. Uh, it was nice to end my time on the island, come here to Sarge's. Spend some time with her. God bless her. Watch her chase the squirrels. <laughs> that never gets old. Though. I'm not going to lie. Also, uh, listen, we're out of here like 12 days. I'm going to Florida first for two weeks. Got to come home and spend Christmas with Sarge. That was my promise to her this year. Uh, I haven't had Christmas with Sarge in quite a while. So uh, I'll be home for, for Xmas with mom and dad, which is awesome. And then uh, Nicaragua bound. See you later. Um, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do the show Tuesday, Thursdays from now on for the foreseeable future. We'll see how that works out. Chopper says, welcome back, bro. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Um, listen, we'll get into it. Uh, I have a really quick spiel on it. That's it. That's all. And then um, and then we'll move on with the show. We're, it's going to be a little different. We're going to keep it shorter. We're going to keep it tighter. We're going to keep it smoother. Uh, and I'll just do my best to keep rock and rolling and entertain you guys. So listen, it's episode 219. <laughs> We're in Sarge's basement. Uh, it's it's good time. She's upstairs. She, first thing she says to her when I say, okay, bye, mom. I'm going back uh, down to do the show now. And she goes, Gregory Scott, make sure you don't swear on that show. I was like, oh, for fuck's sakes, mom. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know, mom. I know, mom. I won't swear. I promise. <laughs> uh it's awesome anyways here we go listen follow me on youtube uh facebook we're back twitter i took a huge hiatus like i said we'll get into that in a minute let's do the sponsors because uh they're pretty awesome and um i and this show wouldn't just be this show without them so first and foremost the utmost they're back shakespeare's fine dining folks i'm telling you if you want the best steak of your entire life and i know you've got a plethora of friends there we go. The first plethora right off the bat. Boom. I know Wade's keeping count. So's uh Kel Baker. Uh, listen, thanks for joining the show, Kel. Listen, Shakespeare's is where it's at. We're going there soon, actually, before I leave. Um, it's Shakespeare's www.shakespeare's.ca. Please, please, please. Oh, my voice cracked. Please make a reservation. Um, it's 905 528 Um, they're located in downtown Hamilton. Anyways, make sure you go check them out. Shakespeare's Fine Dining. The best scallops in the world, honestly, if scallops is your game. Maybe it's it, it's the surf and turf, the steak and uh, lobster. We're having, a, we're having a dinner this weekend at a buddy's, and I have to say I'm a little disappointed in in old uh, my buddy who's hosting the, the, the dinner, Phil Malzer, Philip Malzer, if you're watching. I, I am singing you out right now. We're supposed to have steak and lobster, and he's like, Listen, Gregory, I think um, the lobster's too much work. You buy it! You take it home, you put it in the freezer for 30 minutes to stun its ass, then you put it in boiling water. And then you crack its ass open, dip it in some delicious garlic butter, and off you go. What's so hard about that? Anyways, <laughs> he, he said no. And uh, looks like we're having a fine chicken curry dinner, which... Listen, chicken, anything curry um, is my go-to, so I'm fine with that. But listen, I would have been okay with a steak and lobster dinner, except lobster apparently is too tough to cook. <laughs> His words, not mine, okay? It's nice to be back. Thanks, everybody, for joining who's tuned in so far. Uh, DaCosta, I love it. Uh, I had steak tonight with Sarge. Oh, speaking of Sarge, I'll give you a quick Sarge update before I move on to the next sponsor. Oh, or did I even? Yeah, I did finish the first one. Um, Sarge, she's still doing the best. <laughs> Chasing those squirrels. It never gets old. Honestly, I get up 
every single morning. Now I go to the gym with all, all my pops, which is a new routine. And then we come home. We have coffee and breakfast with Sarge. And I do my pre-work before I come down and record my shit for the day. And there is nothing better than watching her get up and down, up and down, up and down. The second she sees a fucking squirrel on her feeder. It's um, it's unbelievable. Uh, videos to come. I've been secretly sneaking some. We don't have time to play them tonight. We'll, we'll make it a whole new segment. But uh, uh, honestly, it's a trip to watch old Sarge. Anyway, the show is also brought to you by one of the greatest sponsors. I love these guys. They're brand new. Um, it's called Above Your Service. It's a not for profit. It's a not for profit organization. Easy for you to say, hey, dummy. Um, that is veteran based and caters to healthy healing, health, and wellness. Um, my boy Bryce is uh, the, the 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 founder of this. He is an extraordinary human being. I love this guy beyond belief. Go check him out. It's basically it's a Canadian vet. Um, he's a co-host of Fire for Effect, which is a great podcast. Go check it out out there. Um, with my boy, um, uh, Chris, uh, 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 I'm having a mind cramp right now. Uh, uh, army Chris. Thank you. There we go. Um, anyways, go check them out. Uh, anyways, it's above your service. Check them out on Facebook, subscribe. It's a great cause. They really do amazing things. And, um, Bryce is to be commended. He was on the last show. If you remember, anyways, here we go. Uh, listen, we're back. It's, it's been a while. Um, we'll get the elephant out of the room. Listen, before I do that, I want to let you know about there's Bryce right there. Uh, listen, he feeds the homeless. He helps the homeless, uh, veterans, especially, I shouldn't say, especially he helps everybody. He doesn't discriminate. Um, but he is a veteran himself and he is all about helping veterans that are out on the street struggling and stuff. So it's a great cause. Make sure you go check them out. Uh, for sure. It's called above your service. Thanks for the sponsorship. All right. Here we go. Uh, guest tonight. Can't wait to talk to this guy. You'll love him. I don't know. Maybe you know him. Maybe you don't. He's been around since 1994. He's been on a plethora of TV shows and movies. That's twice. Um, and you'll love him. It's Tony Napo. He's been in two incredible movies that was made by friends of mine. Uh, Bandits, which I was just talking about recently on social media, as well as Faking a Murderer. The two roles that he plays in these movies are stunning. I can't wait to talk to him about it. He's coming up, uh, oh, in about 10, 15 minutes. So stick around for that. Can't wait to talk to him. We also have an amazing guitarist on the show tonight. Guitarist, musician, singer. His name's Tobin. He's from Huntsville. I had the pleasure of seeing him play all summer at the uh, at the Big Win Island at the private club. He is a total rock star. This guy will blow your mind. Can't wait to have him on. So check it out for sure. Stick around till the end. All right. Also tonight, um, listen, I've been working really hard. Like I was, so I've disappeared for a while, quite a while. Um, and there's a reason for that. But before I get to that, I want to let you know, uh, we got some amazing, amazing guests coming up. I didn't want to come back and be like, oh, well, maybe we got this guest on this night and maybe I'll do this night. No. Okay. From now on, it's Tuesday, Thursday for the time being. All right. We've got some wicked guests coming up, uh, including some amazing Canadian t talent, including actors, musicians, uh, Paul Langlois and Greg Ball. They got a brand new band coming up. Paul Langlois. Yeah, that name sounds familiar from the hip. Um, brand new band coming out. It's, it's Paul Lang Langlois and his band. A couple of guys from there. They are right there. Greg Ball in the middle. He's been on the show a couple of times. Love that guy. Um, Paul Langlois, final show in 2016 with the hip. He says he's finally ready to come back and he's written, um, a bunch of new songs. I know some of you thought I was going to say that word there, but I didn't. A bunch of new songs. Anyway, the band consists of Greg Ball, as you know, I just said, Joe Carlskillen, both of whom played with um, Paul in the, in, in the past with a, a band called Campfire Liars Club, which is always a little side project of uh, Paul's uh, outside of the hip. And newcomers, Bill Anglin on the drums, Matt Milfhill uh, on bass, who round out the band and they got a new album coming out. Can't wait to hear Paul's new album. And we're either going to have Greg and Paul together or one or the other. We'll see also breaking news, huge, huge, huge. And, and I, I was hoping this would break before the show tonight. And it did Chris Coster, everybody um, from the glory sons is going to join us coming up very, very, very shortly within the next week or two. So I'm really looking forward to talking to that guy sticking with the Kingston connection. We've got uh, a couple of guys from Casador, uh, joining us and also Kyle Washo from the band Carl rundown band. He's now pursuing a solo career. 
He wants to join us. He's got a brand new single on YouTube. It's called Not Even. It's killing it on YouTube. Go check it out. That's Kyle Walshop. So listen, we got some really good stuff. Oh, and also a, a wicked band out of Ottawa called Taming Sorry. You got to check these guys out. They'll be joining us as well coming up. So we got some really cool stuff lined up. Oh, Bonzarelli, uh, been hard at it. Oh, and Leroy from the North. I don't know if you remember this guy. He was on uh, quite a while ago. They opened for Our Lady Peace at the Troubadour, and I was there and saw that show with my boy, uh, Ty, who's back in California shooting a video today as we speak in the Mojave Desert, believe it or not. Uh, anyways, Leroy from the North, kick-ass band out of California. Look him up on YouTube. Um, he's coming back on the show. There we go right there. That's the brand new single, uh, White Nights from Leroy from the North. Unbelievable trio band. You guys will love him. Check him out on YouTube. Anyways, he's coming back on the show soon, and it might even be the whole band. All right. Um, that's it for who's coming up shortly. Oh, uh, by the way, for the ladies, I know Kel's watching um, and Tamara. We still have the firefighter boys lined up. They're ready and excited to come on. Uh, we're just trying, we'll pick the dates and, and that they're still ready. And as a little added bonus for you, ladies, a couple of studs up and coming on the, uh, maybe the Canadian PGA tour, maybe they'll get their cards, who knows, but uh, a couple of studs, uh, pro golfers coming up for the ladies as well. So listen, it's, it's fun. It's It's nice to be back. We're kicking it. Tony, Tony Napo is coming up shortly. Can't wait to see him pop in. Like I said, we got uh, Tobin on uh, the guitar and singing at the end of the show. All right, here we go. So here's where I've been. I'll tell you what's up. I did a show a couple times through the summer. I think one after I ended my stint at the private golf club. And that was it. Um, listen, I, I guess I tried to be a hero this summer. And I thought I could do um, a full-time job and bartend uh, two full-time jobs. Bartend all day. And it turns out all night as well at, at this private island. I thought I could also do the voice work all day. And I thought I could also do two or three shows of, of this all week long. Um, turns out, not so much. I got burnt out pretty quick. Um, and I'm a guy, a male stupid idiot with a penis who hates to admit that he can't do it all. Turns out I couldn't do it all. So the first thing to go, obviously, that doesn't pay, it pays me the least amount of money is this which is sad because I loved it the most, but it, it, it did. It had to go on the back burner. Um, you know, in hindsight, I should have never, ever, ever, ever taken the job uh, on the island only because I worked so fucking hard to get where I was in my social media career and with this show and on the Dean Blundell network and everything. Um, for many reasons, I mean, I, I guess they're not even a secret. Agree to money and love of golf. I thought it'd be fucking sexy to go bartend for these richies on this private island all summer. Get free golf on one of the top 20, 25 ranked golf courses in Canada. And I thought I could pull this show off and pull off the Dean Blundell show and everything. Well, it turns out I was wrong. Um, I really got burnt out quick and, um, I still managed to work 12. I didn't realize the job uh, at the island would be 10 to 12, 13 hours a day, most days a week. And, um, I thought it'd be like an eight and eight sort of deal and I could pull it off for an eight and six. Anyways, um, it just didn't, it got too much for me and I, uh, I had to pack it in on the, uh, on the show. Um, and, and the network, I couldn't blog anymore. I just didn't have the time. Which is fair. You know, I worked my ass off. I, I, I banked a bunch of money. Um, but I did. I, I, I'm pissed off a, a little bit and upset at myself because I gave up. Um, and I, I guess inadvertently walked away from the Dean Blundell show, network. Um, I, I didn't mean to. I didn't want to. But it, it, it also doesn't come down to just that. It comes down to some mental issues, too. I still struggle with PTSD. It doesn't fucking just disappear. Um, I had a super issue on Canada Day, which I've talked about um, in Bala. It hit me hard. And then I think from there on, it really caught up to me, and I realized that I couldn't do it all. And, and listen, it wasn't by choice. Um, I, I had to step back for myself. Maybe it did cost me uh, uh, friendships with with people or, or listeners or 
or uh, being part of the network uh, that I loved. But uh, ultimately, I had to do what was right for me. Um, and I don't regret that. I miss being live. I missed you guys. Um, I, I posted shit here and there, but I wasn't me. And, and I wasn't feeling good. I was really miserable. And I was back to suicidal. And, um, you know, and shit like that pops in your brain again. And man, when you have family and kids and, and responsibilities in life, I had to, I had to step back and, uh, I hope it didn't cost me what I think it might've cost me. I just saw, uh, Lindley pop in, uh, God, bye, man, man, I miss you so much. Um, I got to call you and reach out. I, I kind of have disappeared from everybody. It, it, it hasn't been just a show. I've been very secluded. Um, but I also, um, I I'm back for a reason. I'm back because I'm ready. I'm back because I'm feeling awesome. I've, I, I've been super healthy, which is really good. I've been drinking super less. I've been going to the gym every day with my dad. Um, and it's time. I'm back. And, and I'm ready to entertain and be funny again and stuff. So I had to get out of the way. Um, but that's where I was. Just having some mental, personal issues. And and uh, this time was the longest break I've taken in, in two and a half years since doing the show. Um, I, I needed it, I guess. <laughs> I really did. I tried sometimes to come back so much and, and I tried to reach out to Dean and, 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 and even uh, Lindley, I haven't talked to Lachlan, uh, anybody. I, I just really didn't speak to anybody um, for the, the past long time. I spent a lot of time on the golf course and just doing my job and trying to make some money and, and save some money and, uh, and just deal with myself and, and get better. And here we are. Anyways, moving on. That's enough of that. Um, Happy to be back. Love you guys. Hope you hope you miss me. Uh, uh, and uh, I really did miss you too. Um, listen, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I got a wicked story before Tony jumps in here because I think he's going to be here in any minute. And I, we got to talk about this real quick because this story blows my mind. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this on social media or not, but there's this lady who not only got married to a doll, but she had a baby with it. Okay. Glassy, you got the pictures here. These are, these are beauties. So, so there she is. That's the actually jump, jump back one. Uh, I think there's the one where she's married. That's her. That's her with her man. Okay. So this lady, her name's Mervoni Roca Morez. She's 37. I'm not quite sure. It didn't say where she's from, but she's probably got to be from planet Mars because this is unbelievable. She, so here's the backstory. She was really lonely and sad and she couldn't get a man. And so her mother <laughs> made her this doll because she was tired of listening to her daughter be broken hearted. So she made her mom made her this, this, this life size stuffed. We call it a, it's a rag doll. It looks like, uh, like a man version of raggedy Ann. No, anyways, <laughs> She falls in love, ends up falling in love with this goddamn doll and marries it. I'm not, I, I can't even make this shit up. 250 people come to the wedding. Well, guess what happens after you get married? Oh, there it is. Happy, happy couple, get married. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how Buddy says I do, but listen, just roll with me here. It gets better. So now, marriage happy moving along they have a baby not quite sure if it was a c-section or she had a natural vagina birth but <laughs> uh, there she is god bless her she gave birth to that lovely little rag doll <laughs> uh, marcello jr i guess if you will anyways um it gets better there they are oh look everybody's happy she's with her man and her little baby but then Things turn sour quickly. Turns out old Marcelo is a cheating little son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, again, you can't make this up, folks. Uh, I'm just paraphrasing from what I uh, took off the uh, the internet today. But <laughs> old Marcelo was caught going into a hotel room with another woman whilst his wife was in the hospital with their Ragdoll baby, he had an infection. There he is. <laughs> Anyways, 
while she's in the hospital for three days, old Marcelo is uh, having an affair. Uh, how dare he? That that sly little bastard him. Um, anyways, she was devastated. She didn't know what to do. Turns out even ragdolls are scumbag assholes, just like the rest of us males, or most of us males, not me. And not Glassy. He's a good guy, too. But um, anyways, there is a lot of scumbags out there, including Marcelo, the ragdoll. Uh, anyways, he was caught entering a motel room. <laughs> Where do you find this? <laughs> like, is this is this your filler? It's not a big story in the Daily New in the Daily Mirror today out of England. I mean, you just simply like, can't uh, make this up. This is a true story. Anyways, Miraviano, oh. the the wife, is, was devastated that he uh, Marcelo cheated, but she has been willing to forgive him. Out of love for their baby, and she's willing to uh, forgive it. She did. She did say the how she found out. You ask, and I'm glad you asked. Turns out, um, he left she his knows. cell phone out, and she found some messages um, that led her to find out that he was cheating and having an affair with her. Okay, so, so the doll's cheating. Yeah, yeah. The doll's he has a cheating cell phone on too, her. Apparently, that she found that with text messages on it that proved that he was cheating with this um, lady in the hotel room. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? That's, <laughs> you know what? Pretty... You know what? There's, there's a couple of things I find really amazing about this story, Glassy. One okay. is that Jeez. this doll and this crazy bitch who should be in a, in a mental institution is getting more sex than you and me combined. Second, um, the fact that the doll is able to have a cell phone and, text message and get caught cheating that way that's pretty impressive <laughs> i i'm re i'm really concerned with the amount of time that you've had off and you start the show with this <laughs> wow well dude <laughs> yeah my head hurts too from this story oh like, hold on glassy can you fill for a second um tobin the musician can't find the link i've just got to resend it to him so stand okay, by let's Let's uh, um, let, talk about the doll and maybe how Bonzi's had a depressing summer and this is what he comes back with. Well, listen. We're, no, we're going to start you go find me for that. Doll is getting doll. more sex um, than, than you and I are. Mm. How, how, um, oh, and, and Tony just messaged me too. He said he's sitting here ready um, and he's wondering how to get on. <laughs> I wonder, I, I got to babysit all these guys. I sent them all the links and I got this all set up. So stand by. Give me one second. Tony's going to be on here in a sec. Um, go. Yeah, stay on. The chopper has it right here. Stay on the mushrooms, bro. Stay on the mushrooms. I am microdosing. Uh, I did that, eh? I did that. Right like, not How did it work out for you? Do you like it? I did not. It was a very uncomfortable experience and it was a very long night. Yeah. Really, I would have gone down the rabbit hole of the uh, the the married of dolls that you went down. Obviously, I'm surprised you weren't high when you were digging up that story. It's nice to be back, though. Uh, nice everybody joining us. We got everybody in the crowd, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, hopefully, let's get it going, man. Let's get it going. Yeah, I, I tried. You. We gotta Tony, go fund me for that shirt of yours. That's what we got to have a GoFundMe next for. <laughs> You're yeah. still so upset. I will. I I think. I might have given them all away at this point, but I um, hope so. okay. Listen, I'm gonna ask Tony. Um, send me your email address, please. Okay, I just sent that to Tony. Tony's waiting. He's uh, for some reason the link on his messenger on his phone is not working. So we're gonna get his email address. You're gonna send it to him shortly while we kill some more time. Because uh, we got a, a couple of more things to talk about um, as oh, well. Please, what's next? Please tell us. Oh, what's it says. Next. It says. Can you see him in the? Um, nope. I can't see him anywhere either. So no. I'll let's resend him the link right now. Uh, can you do that? Actually, no, you can't. Because I can't. Oh, it says his browser is not supported on his phone. That's what's happening. Uh, Safari it's not supports us. it. Safari supports it. Google Chrome supports it. Depends mm. on what he's running. It, let's he's let's running send it to his email. Okay. There you go. Your <clears throat> email. All right. Stand by, folks. We'll try and get Tony back on through email. Um, and Tobin as well. We have to 
both of these guys, I don't know what happened. It, it, it used to always work. We send them the link, boom, they pop in just like you and I did. But uh, what were okay? I got Tony's email. So, Glassy, maybe I'll send this I, to you here, right now. I'll fill it. How about this? This is an amazing challenge that's going around the internet right now that is not involving sex or marriage with dolls. It's uh, the tortilla challenge. <laughs> you gave me a tortilla? No, Lee. So, this is called the tortilla challenge. Challenge. You ask your partner questions, and for every wrong answer, they get smacked in the face with tortilla. Okay, you take your tortilla. Okay. What? <laughs> wait. I told you to test All right. It out. Is it working? No. Ow! This is gonna get real. Yeah. Your dick bleeding. Could you do this with your dog? Time out. We didn't even start the game yet. I can't see. <laughs> I just want you to know that I love you. This is not personal. This is. Oh. I'm just playing the game. Heads or tails? Call in the air. Go. Heads. Tails. How did I get the scar on my knee? You got bit by a dog. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Can we go? Hey, Mayweather. <laughs> chill out. Remember, I fell off the counter and a steak knife cut me. You never told me that. Yes, I did. What was the first movie I saw in theaters without a parent? Come on. Scream. Oh. <laughs> It was Men in Black. I spray painted my bike black and I drove around the neighborhood thinking I would catch aliens. What was my basketball jersey number in high school? Uh, 10. <laughs> 20. 20. I, plus 10 yeah. is you didn't let me finish the question. What color is my underwear today? Black. Ow! I actually got the Bob Ross one. Oh my god! What's such things as mistakes? Just happy accidents. <laughs> what is the first thing I do when I wake up? Go pee. Yes, you do. Everybody does. I open my eyes. Oh my god. What number am I thinking of? Right now? Yep, right now. What number? Four. Ow. 763. If I could choose to be one age the rest of my life, what age would I be? 12. Not 12. 21? No. You could drink. 30. Yes. 30? Yeah. <laughs> Why? You got some mileage on you. Not that you do. You look great. Like I have mileage on no, me now? No, or? you look good. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, my ear's ringing. No, time out. You can't just cold clock me out of nowhere. See, I think I would totally do that just for the sake of slapping somebody with a tortilla. I think I, that would be a lot of fun. Dude, I, I listen, that looks like it could be okay to start. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're doing that with your lady and you've had a couple of glasses or she's had a couple of glasses of wine or too many, I'm, I'm sensing domestic violence turning... Uh, getting a, a, a hot real quick there with that <laughs> mm -hmm. it looks totally. harmless and fun but buddy right off the bat he's like i got a i got a nosebleed you know and then yep. i don't know it just i wouldn't partake in that game especially these days in 2022 are you kidding me bro the last thing i'm doing is slapping any woman uh, uh, for with with a hand, a banana, a fucking taco eye show. I don't, I don't care, bro. Just not happening. <laughs> when she did that game big time, that's awesome. Okay, Tobin's got the link <laughs> right. now. Um, okay. I think you're on it with um Tony. Yep. I'm gonna send him an email. So Tony, check your email in two seconds. So Tony, Bye. check your email in two seconds. Uh, all right. So what else we got tonight? We could talk about oh the World Cup. Let's talk about this. Rocking my uh, England, supporting my guys. So listen, I posted this the other day. I think on my Facebook. Um, listen, Canada's in it for the first time since I think nineteen. I think before I was born. Okay, so I never ever had the opportunity to cheer for Canada in the World Cup since a little boy who grew up loving soccer because my parents are from England. If you didn't know, um, so soccer is sort of in my DNA. I was born in Canada, so I've got like that mix of my parents came here, I don't know, two years and then I was born. So full on English, but full on Canadian. And I, and I love being from Canada. I really do. I, I'm super proud to be Canadian, but I'm also super proud to be half English. And it's in my blood. It's my parents born. At, like I spent a lot of time in England when I was a little kid. Uh, went to a lot of soccer games, football, sorry, if uh, over there. Um and listen, so the fact that Canada is in the World Cup this year is absolutely amazing. But, and I might get in trouble for this from my fellow Canadian brethren, but you go fuck yourself. Because guess what? My parents were born and raised in England. They came here as immigrants. They wanted to experience new stuff. Thanks, Glassy, for that. Um, and, and then they, they had sex and, and had me here. 
So, yeah, I'm Canadian, but I still love uh, England. And God damn it, do I ever want to see England Can win the World Cup over Canada this year? I'm sorry. I've waited what, too what long. What did you tell England. us as Canadian fans? What's that? What did you tell us as Canadian fans? What do you mean? I told you. What did I, you just say? Go what? Yourself? I don't remember what I say. It just comes out of me. You can't ask me. All I know is, go England, go Canada. I'm fully rooting for Canada. Do not get me wrong. But I really, really think that Canada is going to be around for a long time. Now I think we've got some up-and-coming amazing players. We're not, we're not just going to disappear like we have for the last 40 years. But, God damn it, England just missed out on, on uh, winning the Euro Cup last year against it, Italy. Uh, which which is is unbelievable that they're not even in the World Cup now. Um, but listen, I am rooting for England first and foremost, um, and Canada second. And you can come and hate on me, but uh, that it video? is right there. Before we get into Tony, welcome. Uh, did you see the uh, video of um, uh, Saudi Arabia beating um, Argentina yesterday? Shocker! This is awesome. Roll this. This is pretty funny. Yes. Oh, uh, but wait, wait, wait. Saudi Arabia playing 50 ranked 53rd I believe in the world playing yep. ranked uh, number 3 um uh, uh, still number 1 um uh, the, uh what do you call them uh, and I'm having a mind cramp who they beat uh, Argentina yeah um, yes. yeah Argentina anyways looks good on him hand to god Di Diego Maradona he can suck it anyways roll this clip it's awesome to watch Saudi Arabia celebrate beating Argentina The door. That's a Bonzi party. Give that door. They ripped the door off. That looks like you were in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. There you go. With that, I'll go get to your guest. Stop stalling. Awesome. Uh, without further ado, folks, I'd like to uh, introduce you to uh, Tony Napo. Welcome to the show, Tony. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you I, hear me? Look at that. Hey, you on. are the boss. Um, listen, well, we'll, we'll you're jump talking right about I, there is I'm no wearing World it. Cup this year. I'm wearing it. Yes, there is. No, Just not. because your team failed to make it, which is really pathetic, by the way, I have no, to no, say. No, no, they canceled the whole, whole thing. <laughs> I don't know what well, you're talking about. Maybe in your eyes, but there is still games. Uh, England, my England won 6 2 against Iran yesterday, which is awesome. Uh, Canada's tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. Will you, will you, all jokes aside, will you watch and root for Canada tomorrow, Tony? No, probably not. I, I, I never watch sports. Okay. I never watch sports at all. Oh, yeah. I win. All right. Well, there you go. Well, let's jump right into it. We'll introduce you. Um, you're Tony Napo, Canadian actor. Dude, you've been in a plethora of, of TV shows, movies, um, all sorts of awesome stuff. Um, it was a pleasure. I got the the pleasure to meet you. Had the pleasure to meet you at the the premiere of of your latest movie, Vandits, which yeah. ugh, such an unreal movie. We'll get into it. Um, written and directed and produced by Stu Stone, Adam Rodness, which two amazing dudes. Um, it was really fun and stuff. Uh, tell me about that whole experience of being there. And and I know you're a big advocate of of Canadian acting and how it it gets sure. sort of poo-pooed in Canadian theaters and stuff, the, the movies like this, uh, Canadian made, but it was a pretty special night, yeah? It was very cool, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, most times that, uh, that you might have a cast and crew screening, and, um, and you, you know, you get lucky if you get half, half the theater filled, uh, giving the tickets away for free. Um, so we actually, well, you were there we were at the Cineplex, and uh, we ran for a week. We did really well. Uh, we sold out in here and people people paid to come see the film and uh we got extended in winnipeg for for films like this so it's all word of mouth and, and stuff and these these films and then because the christmas film is going to be back every year so i expect uh i don't expect it uh, maybe over this christmas uh i hope it's going to be on hollywood sweet by then 
and maybe my next or some other streaming service. But that's that's the world of you know film and television is shifting. Uh, these library channels like like uh, streaming services and uh, too. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm really proud we'll of the film. We'll get into that a little later on in the interview, but uh, let's stick with the, it. Was an amazing night. Um, it was great. It was really it was fun to see great. all of you there. The, the cast of this movie is outstanding. I mean, you've got. Let's talk about this for a quick second. You, you've got Jan Arden. You've got uh, yeah. Jesse Camacho. Uh, yeah. There's so many great actresses and actors in this movie. Um, what, tell me what that was like. You, everybody you, calling Tony Francisco Enrico Antonio. Antonio. He's there, Rob Wells. Yeah, Rob Wells. Not Rob Wells from Trailer Park Boys. There we go. Um, That's right. It's such a stunning cast. It must have been a blast uh, to be on set with with so many cool people. It was pretty great. Great, and you know, uh, Rico, pretty good because I done a film with Rob ages ago, and uh, he's just Rico and I are very, very, very good friends. Um, we've done several things together now. Bad Blood, uh, and a lot of stuff together and uh so i called both of those guys and i mean producers of them offers but then uh these guys didn't really know you know Stu and adam i said yeah come and come and join us uh, uh, out in winnipeg please you guys these two guys are fantastic films and and so they both came along and they're both fucking hilarious and i think can you say fuck on this yeah yeah we can okay. uh my, they're both my mom hilarious. get a little Tony, but that's okay. She's used to it. Okay. And then, uh, and then, Jan Arden, I had met, but I didn't really know her. But uh, when I read it, perfect for it, and it's and not in a light, light that a lot of people know her for. You know, she can and and, and roll with the bad boys. Uh, she can like she's that like diamond yeah. in the rough. We all know her as this talented, yeah. awesome Canadian singer. But goddamn, she can act and treasure. Yeah. She funny. And, act, and she's a lot of fun. I mean, she's just a yeah. really, really cool per person. Yeah, yeah, it's super awesome. So um, let's go back a, a second. The trailer of this is, is hilarious. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Let's give people a quick idea of what we're talking about, and then we'll jump more into okay. the movie. Uh, okay. A movie that almost didn't happen, and we'll talk about why right. after we see the trailer. Watch this. Hit it, Glossy. Where's my guy? <laughs> Here, I can act it out. <laughs> I think Christmas I have it. Maybe this is it do, right do, here. Do, Hold on. Do, 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 here. Oh, here it comes. Glassy. I think I... Why well, I want to <laughs> Some producer I got, eh, bro? <laughs> this guy. Well, anyway, he, so... He got it, me on here. Back. He got me, me on here. He, he did get, get you in here. Anyways, he yeah. disappeared, but I have access to it, but I, I can't hit play for some reason, so I'll leave it up to him. Anyways, uh, working with Stu Stone and Adam Rodness uh, wasn't the first Love time him. with this movie. You you actually worked with them on uh, the movie before Faking this murder. that they did. What, dude? Yeah, it was called What Fake. an incredible movie. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, they, they were, they're great. These guys are to go, and I didn't know Stu at all. All. But uh, but I'm, I'm a huge fan. I love. I just love working with both. Been around for a long time, and I've been uh, in my mind. I've been thinking because I had a you know I'm a. Um, when am I going to meet my Scorsese? And so now, yeah. these two little they call themselves Five Seven Film. Five Seven Film. Yeah, they're both five seven, and uh, yeah. and uh, and they're funny. They're like an old Jewish married couple they're constantly bickering but they are you know with, with with love with love but yeah uh, yeah we're setting up a you know, just like we just sit there and eat and smoke and wait um yeah. you know they're brilliant and uh, and they're fun they're fun to be around and uh and we're just on faking murder was fucking great because i just got to be insane the whole time and, and it really worked worked out and um i don't know if you want to talk about the film you go ahead yeah i know i do just for a minute because i bring up this picture right here um this is you with Stu, yeah. who's the director the writer and he stars in it as well 
Um, this scene, uh, and as it continues, is probably one of the most disturbing scenes I've ever seen. I will never be able to look at Stu the same way again. <laughs> um, and even you yourself. Um, you pulled off a pretty incredible role in that movie. What What was it like? transforming or sort of being that character was it was it uh, difficult it, was it something different uh, for you i mean i mean it, it, some ways but no i mean i i i really really like getting to uh to just test a go with stuff you know i'm i'm sticking my tongue down, down fucking stew's throat and in, in, in <laughs> yeah. that scene. there were no there, there was no scripts there were no scripted lines we just had kind of a basic outline accomplishing in each scene and in, and in different takes, we would do different things. Uh, you know, we didn't shoot a lot because of course, cause it's low budget, but uh, I just went, you know, I just, or I just let myself go mental, but, but also in a very safe way. I mean, I'm a professional I do fight scenes and murder scenes and violent scenes, you know, any kind of stuff like that, you have to super safe. So there's no actual danger. And then you just need to, to be on the same page and then go as far as you can to make it feel like it's actually dangerous, you know. But it, and so that all comes down to trust. But um, but yeah, we we just went nuts. I mean, the wall in that scene, and you know, we were actually smacking each other a little bit and stuff. But uh, you know, yeah. it's, like, it's like boys playing cops and robbers or or whatever. You know, we kids. Having a having a mental time, it's great. Yeah, it, it's it's a twisted movie. It's a great concept, um, and it sort yeah. of leads into how because they are such bickering uh, buffoons, yeah. almost if you will, and it just fits into what they do. And then they make well, that relates the relationship they have on camera in that film isn't it's entire. It's a component of their relationship, and why I yeah. really. Enjoy enjoyed being around them so much you know for sure so it leads into their new movie vandits which you star in yeah. again with them um winnipeg you film in winnipeg couldn't you talk to Stu and adam and say hey boys couldn't we shoot this movie in florida and make it a christmas movie <laughs> why winnipeg of all places <laughs> it has to do with tax credits and money sure. i have sure. no idea but you yeah. know it was, it was it's great. It's not the ideal place to film in November overnight, the entire time. Yeah. So, Glassy, you you joined us back. We lost Glassy for a bit. The producer, he's back. Glassy, do you have the uh, trailer? He's Can you roll that drinker? Out? I heard. He's all a right. Drink. Let's check this. Out. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, well, he's a drinker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the trailer for Bandits. Here we go. Okay. It worked this time. It was the night before Christmas. So what do you do? Get together with friends? Perhaps have an eggnog or two? Enjoy while you can. Whatever you choose. Because on this holy night, all hell will break loose. Seems like something's gonna go wrong here. $25,000, here we come. And then we get the Lambos, then we get those Lambos. How do you even know the money's here? Of course the money's here. They keep it in the money room in the back. I love your mustache. Stop. Oh, shoot. I gotta touch it. Okay! Sweet people. Hilarious. Cool. Dude, Pretty you should cool. be so proud. Uh, I was I'm super so proud. I'm so proud. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, when you watch a film, 
you know, moments of myself that I always wish I could go back and change or fix or and, uh, and, and, uh, and take, take another take. Uh, but overall, everybody brought Jan, Robin and Rico are fucking brilliant. And yeah. Jesse, Francesco, and we're all wonderful. I mean, it was a great yeah. team. We spent a lot of time in a van and we spent, well, a, I was just going to say you, you literally sat in a van. So a lot of the movie, uh, without giving too much yeah. away is, and, and we're not, but is you are in a van with three other people for a lot of the movie. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that must have been, um, you know, you, you got to be lot of, some sort of camaraderie and tight time it, together. It, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, we're only in, are we whole parts or, or the, do, you, do you let them go or how does that go in the, in a, in the van <laughs> and tight quarters all that time? We're only, we're only in the van for a few minutes here. A few minutes there. We actually get okay. out of the van, you know, between takes. Um, and, and, and we do have to spend a lot in the van. On screen, just so you know, who the fuck would want to see that movie? Um, yeah. But yeah, essentially, it's these. You know, it's about these four. Uh, uh, well, me, loser, and three kids uh, who are going to rob a senior citizen's bingo hall and Christmas Eve dollar prize. And uh, and I forgot. You know, I keep forgetting every time I see the trailer. I can't speak like this the whole movie because uh, end of school. Script, uh, the guy, and so he's got, to, he's got to go, you know, rob, rob the Spingo Hall. But yeah. in life, if I had just fixed my new, a new set of teeth I bought, and when I bought them, and and the way it was written was this sort of this tough guy, and you know, if I play, it seems it tends to feel like a tough guy. Uh, but I wanted this guy to. Do. Uh, to to have a a sort of a pathetic quality and a uh, and so uh, you know be, just uh, altering my speech and sort of leaning into the uh, uh, you know if you if you said hey guys let's go fucking do this it's one thing but if you hey that's a whole different thing yeah uh, so uh, and without giving be quiet uh, without giving too much away. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it. I think it wasn't sure that choice was going to work and come off cheesy, or or, or you know, sort of sucking the audience, sucking up to the audience. Yeah. And for the most part, you know, I would change that when I a couple of times. I thought it's a bit cutesy, but for the most part, I thought it really worked. Yeah, it's it's a hilarious movie. Everybody's got to go check it out. Where so it was just in theaters, had a great run. Um, yeah. where is it coming it, out? Where can people see it coming be up shortly? Hollywood Sweet. Hollywood Sweet was one of the producers, and then, uh, you know, I think they offer a, a trial period, so take the free trial. Uh, uh, just joking, Hollywood Sweet. Uh, um, but uh, exclusive run, and then after that. That's what happened with faking a murderer. So I'm assuming we'll yeah. probably go to Netflix and uh, Apple, you know, whatever all the things are called. I don't know. Yeah. And it is cool that it's a Christmas movie. Um, it's brilliant. Yeah. You guys are all awesome in it. It was so fun uh, meeting you at the premiere. It's It's been great having you on the show. Real quick, before I let you go, I'd yeah. be remiss if I didn't mention You've been on. You've been around a long time, Mister. I don't hate. I hate to date you and stuff, but 30, 30 been on years. TV and movies since nineteen ninety four. Like that's a long yeah, time. I know. You know. Did so, you have hair? Did you have hair then? I did. I had a plethora of hair back then, Mister. It was down <laughs> to here. It was all curly, and the girls loved it. I, I, I had abs. No, just back all then. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> oh well it is what it is you got nicer teeth than me though they're way whiter but i love the new, <laughs> the new uh, but it's you've been in stuff off. like the incredible hulk the zombie movies one two and three yeah, yeah. um there's so many others that jimmy falcone you were a voice saw the movie saw like yeah. you're in those like um yeah. I, real quick what what was what's the difference of tv movies what's better do, do, do you like doing tv more movies more you know i don't really care to be honest i like doing things writing is good and 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 challenging to 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 some degree or maybe if it's shitty writing and the money's really 
<laughs> I'll do that too. But as an actor, uh, you know, uh, 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 good writing is the best thing. And then obviously is shit that people see. So, uh, so when, when you're involved in a for, uh, for, for brothers or forget about it. Yeah. Amazing bad, movie. Blood, you know, I'll do 20 jobs and then one that people see 20 jobs and then one that people see. And then, uh, you know, so ones that people see that you can build a career with that people say, Oh, I that guy from that thing versus, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people went down to Canada with long resumes and nobody knew it's work. You know, I did one scene or a couple of scenes on Shit's Creek and books because everybody sees that. Yeah. But, you know, done two seasons of strays, which is a uh, great show, by uh, the way. I was just going to bring that up. CBC. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're we just we're the second, but not, not that many people have seen it. You know, I, I, hopefully again, and that's another one that might get on and gem is great, but you, yeah. you know, how many people have it? It's, it's just a numbers game. Uh, if you can get boom, boom. I, I think if strays gets on Netflix, we'll do, we'll do five, seven seasons. You got to find the audience and, and, and in yeah. this, in this shifting it's, world, it's, it's that's a crazy that's show. You're going to find it. Talks. There's a there's a lot of dogs on that show. What's it like working with all those animals and stuff? There's a cat room where all the cats are, and I'm allergic to cats, oh, so I just great. I have to avoid that. Uh, but most of the rest <laughs> of the animals, you know, they're adorable. Uh, they they've got uh, Laura and another woman's name off the top of my head. The the animal trainers and wranglers are fantastic, and that whole cast and crew and the create everybody on that show is, is amazing and I love, love them. And, uh, but anyway, that's what I'm saying. You, you know, like a one scene on Shit's Creek versus two seasons on people have seen me on that one scene in the two seasons. For now, hopefully they're going to find strays. Uh, sure. All the American stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, you, that's why that's why we're movie stars, you know, be the American or British or whatever. Uh, you know, we, we shit so that people can see us it's a it's a bit of a, a coattail you know right it sure. works well listen man it's been a pleasure having you on and talking to you uh yeah you're a good guy i really like to meet your sons is that right yeah you did you thought yeah. the one my youngest you said he sounded like an american even though he's canadian you couldn't figure that out and uh the other <laughs> yeah. one is a dead ringer for justin bieber so <laughs> justin bieber's now me and him yeah, it's hilarious. Listen, uh, Bandits, it's a brand new movie. It's awesome. You kill it in it. Thanks. Faking a Murderer, go check it out as well. And yeah. Stray is your latest thing. Um, that's a huge yeah. show. It's pretty funny. So it's go check great. it out. It's been a pleasure having you, Tony. I appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. My Hollywood suite around Christmas. I think it'll be there. All right. Well, we'll, well, when it does come out and we know, I'll let everybody know. Oh, and I, we got a, uh, we have a mutual friend, um, Carrie Beal. I'd be remiss oh, yeah, if I yeah. didn't say, uh, yeah, she sort of uh, was, um, let me know that you guys are friends and uh, that yeah. we had that connection and stuff. So that's really cool too. Childhood She's friends since like little kids. Wow. So yeah, wow. wonderful girl. Cool. Thanks again, Tony. And uh, listen, I look forward to having you back on the show down the road. Love you, buddy. I'll see you next time. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Tony Napo, everybody. That guy's badass. You legit. Okay. So faking a murderer is already out there. You can go find it on all the streaming services. You got to check out the insane cuckoo role that old Tony plays off and pulls off in that movie. And then the next one, Vandits, which will be uh, coming to all the streaming services soon through 5-7 Films and all that. My boys, Stu Stone and uh, Adam Rodness. Uh, amazing movie. Tony kills it in that one as well. And uh, he's the lead uh, sort of of the, of the misfits who he takes to rob uh, a, a Christmas Eve bingo <laughs> for 25 grand. And they all, they're all they all so stupid that they think it's going to be enough money to buy Lambos. It's, it's a whole thing. You got to see it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. To Tony Napo. Without further ado, we got to bring him right in. He's been patient, waiting in the background. This guy's amazing, amazing musician. I had the uh, pleasure of seeing him kick some serious ass all summer at Big Win Island. Uh, it's Tobin. Welcome, bud. How are you? Hey, good. Thanks, Fonzie. How are you doing? 
Yeah, really good. I appreciate the patience. I saw you sitting there waiting. And uh, listen, I wasn't lying. It, it was awesome to see you play this summer. Um, incredible, talented musician. You're up. Uh, you're from Huntsville. And um, you are a pretty big deal up in the Muskokas, uh, my friend. And it was cool to to see you sort of perform and then see all the people that know you and, and speak highly of you and, and stuff. So that must feel pretty good, eh? Well, it certainly keeps me busy, uh, but I appreciate you saying so. I do. Uh, I feel lucky to be able to play around Muskoka. You know the amount I do, especially throughout the summer. It's pretty. It's a pretty nice spot to to play music and mingle. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so listen, let's see, let's go right back to the beginning, real quick, before you play us some tunes. Um, how sure. did you get started? Uh, what brought you to playing the guitar? How old were you? And and let's yeah. go there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you oh. fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I, um, yeah, so I mean, I grew up in a musical family. Um, mom's side of the family, family, and, uh, you know, so, you know, pretty much everybody played uh, violin or piano or something like that. I, I, music lessons didn't uh, stick very well for me as a youngster, but my dad had a band too, and uh, so there were some guitar players hanging out, and by the time I was 11 or 12, I, uh, I uh, you know, started to pick it up and show some interest. So it kind of started out there. Nice. Uh, so you are extremely talented. Is there that whole 10,000 hour rule? Does it come into play? Because literally there's not a song that you can't play, uh, whether it's a request or, and you have such a wide genre of when you play your cover tunes and stuff. Um, including uh, being part of a Neil Neil Young tribute band uh, that I saw that you that you did on, on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. So so, is that is that just countless and countless and countless hours in your bedroom alone and and learning all these songs? How does that how does that pan out? Yeah, I think so. I think I believe in the the rule of the ten thousand hours when it comes to just about anything. Although you know, I feel like I probably put in my ten thousand hours just because I've been playing and, and carrying on for a long time but you know there's times when I would like to sit down and you know the practicing never ends you know I, I don't think I've really got to the point where I, I would say I'm satisfied but because I've kind of worked and, and played a lot so I, I think you you know I did, developed a knack for, for learning songs because you know I'd be playing these gigs you know at this point in the game I'm primarily a, an entertainer and so you know that that's just sort of you, you start to play enough gigs and you get out there and people say uh, oh, can you play this song? And, and you know, when I was younger playing gigs, I didn't know anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, that can make for a tough gig in some places, right? When you don't have, uh, you know, when you don't have the right material, uh, you know, people could get, uh, you know, most people are really friendly, but occasionally once in a while you can get some people that, uh, you know, they, they make it known that maybe you're not the right guy for the gig. So uh, anyway, so along the way, I've just sort of learned a lot of songs and then and then you kind of get kind of get good at picking them up in a hurry. Is there a big difference between learning the songs in your bedroom and then being able to go and perform them in front of people, whether you're in a band where maybe you get to hide behind the other band members? And I know you do a lot of solo stuff, so you put yourself out there. Is it, is, is there a difference? Like, do you feel, how did, how did you learn or, or uh, to be such a calm, cool performer, which I've seen firsthand from you? Um, does that come with practice and hit and miss and, and fucking up a lot? Or does it just, is it something that you just were sort of natural at? Yeah. You, you know, I think you just get good at, uh, you know, smoothing out the fuck ups cause they happen. But, yeah. uh, you know, you just get good at sort of uh, smiling and shaking it off and not letting stuff sort of um, get you down. I think that a lot of it, you know, uh, they say, you know, you practice something, you get to the point where you feel like you've got something 100% down. But when you go to get in front of people, uh, oh, that's a good comment. What's that say there? Spending time alone in your bedroom makes a good guitarist. Bonzi would make Hendrix look like a hack. I like that one. <laughs> Listen, uh, never mind. I was going to say something. I'm going to leave it because Wade's trying to goat me into some stupid stuff and I almost <laughs> did, but I'll let you continue on. But, yeah. but it is a difference, right? Um, it, it, is there a difference? Are you able, like when you're with the band, is it a little less pressure to perform knowing that your fuck ups won't be as noticeable because there's three, four, five other guys that fuck up along with you um, as opposed to playing solo where it's just you and you're like, 
Man, I better be tight or else. Yeah, yeah. Playing solo, you gotta, you know, I've done it a lot, so it's hard to remember what it was like. But uh, I think it's, you know, you're certainly you're on your own, and you, and you, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely more out there on a limb. You, you don't have anybody to to have your back. So I would say, you know, it's it's a little you're, you feel a little more exposed, but but you get used to it. Um, I think one of the big things is is, um, you know, just. Always try. One thing I've learned is try to play stuff that you know or, or, or that you're comfortable with or put yourself in a comfortable position. I always find where when shit goes wrong, it's like you spend, you know, a bunch of time rehearsing for a one off gig and then you play a bunch of songs that you've never done before. And that's usually, you know, because you just it's easy to, easier to crack under the pressure, I feel like, with that. And it usually still goes OK, but it, it's it's a lot more fun when you're playing for an engaged audience and you're relaxed and they're relaxed and everybody, that's a big part of it, I find. So, I mean, I usually, I, I lose sight of that a lot of the time still, but that's kind of what makes it go cool now. Well, I haven't seen you play since the, uh, since the Island when, when I left in September, uh, I was supposed to see you play at a private party that I actually set up uh, <laughs> and hired you for as the entertainment, but then I got sick and couldn't make it. Um, uh, we'd love to hear you play a song. What, what, uh, what do you got for us first tonight? Um, well, I, uh, I'll play, uh, there's this Chris Stapleton tune I've been doing a lot lately, played it a lot out at uh, Big Win this summer and, um, you know, I've, I've really been enjoying it. So, uh, I'll start with that one. If that's all Love right. It. Yeah, for sure. All right, everybody, without further ado, it's Tobin from Huntsville. Let's go. Thanks, Hunts. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Stapleton, uh, such a, he's really taken off and become some popular. And uh, that's a great cover of that for sure. Thanks so oh, much. Thank you. 
Yeah. Uh, one more. I'd love to hear another one, if you don't mind. And then I'll ask you a couple questions and we'll wrap up. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, well, maybe I'll play uh, a COVID original. Sure. Why not? <laughs> so, you know, I think uh, us musicians, like a lot of people, had some time on our hands uh, during, you know, the COVID that thing, yeah, and, uh, that hiatus. <laughs> yeah, so I, I actually got a chance to, to, to work on writing again for a bit. Um, so this one's called The Way. Awesome. For some time, I've been wondering in my mind. I've been facing myself in my in my time. But I waited too long, fell behind. It's always sometimes you wonder why No matter how hard you seem to try You can always be But it's losing when you learn As I watch sparks fade away And feel the burn Days with the night, I could dream with you so sharply and cut right through the atmosphere. Maybe someday you'll think of me, baby. What would have been seen around me and think about what could have been the way? Could have been the way.
Yeah, man. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, Thanks. it sounded so good. Listen, is there uh, the the reason behind that song? Is that is that personal, or is that just something that sort of came to you? Is there? Yeah, I'm still figuring it out myself. Um, you know, it's one of those songs that was uh, written in the studio with uh, my guitar player uh, Brian, who who has a home studio, and so you know, just late nights, sort of drinking, putting it together. Some of the words just sort of came out, and then and then uh, you know, the chorus starts to take shape. But I, you know, it sort of has that. I mean, it's I think it's fairly obvious. It's uh, you know, just about. Um, you know, things that once were and that could have been and, and how they might have turned out if, if they had gone differently. <laughs> right. You, you just never know. Uh, yeah. It's a really cool song. Uh, you Thank sound you. fantastic. Listen, uh, growing up and stuff is uh, influences, favorite influences to this day back then. Um, who are your favorites? Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of the favorites that I had when I first started out are, are some of the, the same ones now. Like, um, I think... Um, you know, Neil Young was probably one of the, my earliest influences just from, uh, you know, songwriting and, uh, and, and of course, guitar playing. I'm a big fan of his guitar playing, um, you know, and then, you know, of course, uh, Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. Pink Floyd got into got into all that. And uh, and then, um, you know, I think my guitar hero would probably be Stevie Ray Vaughan, <laughs> just like all time. And, uh, but, you know, along the way, you know, that's the one thing about, you know, me doing a lot of music lessons and, and playing a lot of gigs along the way. I picked up, um, you know, a lot of influences just from, from other people's interests and requests. You know, I, I like, uh, you know, I like a lot of country, outlaw country, different types of stuff now. You know what I mean? I played uh, with uh, a band, Laganza, for years where we sort of did the, you know, Sublime was a big influence and, and we did sort of like the... Uh, the rock and reggae type vibe. So been down a number of different roads, but you know, I think that sort of roots and blues and rock and, and country, just all that kind of stuff where there's like real, real musicians playing real music. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man, you, you pull it all off and you pull it off real well. I saw uh, people can go to your YouTube channel. Um, it's pretty special too. It's, it's Tobin spring band. And there's a video of you guys there doing the the Neil Young tribute sort of whole night. Um, that's fantastic. You sound fantastic. Um, he's probably like I just I just listened to him on Howard Stern last week. Um, such an amazing guy. The music that he wrote and played uh, over the years, it just it just kept getting better and better and better and stuff. And I can see why he's a huge influence. Uh, anyways, man, it's been a real pleasure. I know. It was fun to watch you play this summer, and then it was fun, even funner. Is that a word? Funner to watch you go to to private tables because even after you were done in the in the main dining room or even outside, people would would call you over to their tables and and uh, and you'd go and sit and play for them privately. And it was just cool to see that and hear you. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show and and get you at my friend's party. So before you, you cut him loose, before you cut him loose, uh, Tobin, big fan. Uh, I've seen some of your work. Uh, Got to pump your gig coming up Friday night. Talk about that. You play at Legion. <clears throat> yeah, well, thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, so that's a, a local gig here in Huntsville. And I just got my uh, four-piece band. It actually could end up being a little bit larger because I think we're going to have a few special guests. But, um, you know, this is my parents run a concert series up here uh, called the Atwell Concert Series. It's uh, – uh, the, you know, they do it Sunday afternoons throughout the um, summer months, but then they do the odd show throughout the winter time. So that's that's what this is. It'll be, you know, a good time. Probably a lot of dancing and, and drinking and carrying on. Right on. Cool. Uh, big fan also. Uh, we run a jam every Wednesday here. Uh, I'm in BC, so about, a, about an hour and a half uh, east of Vancouver. Every Wednesday we run an open jam, man. It'd be killer. If you ever came out west, get a hold of him, get a hold of me. I'd love to have you. So. Oh, I'm in. Absolutely. Yeah. Last time I was out there, I did one, um, I think, uh, oh, what's this? A spot out on the island there. Uh, oh, I'm drawing a, a blank on it, but it was, uh, uh, it'll come to me after we're done here. But I, I actually participated in a, in, a, in a jam night out there, and it was, it was fantastic. Cool. Yeah. yeah. If you ever awesome. come, if you ever come west, I was like, oh, I was googling you and searching up you on you, and uh, playing the Legion. Like we have our Anavets Club here. This is where we have yeah. our jams, right? And uh, yeah, big fan. So really cool. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. So yeah, thanks for having on. You bet. Yeah, Tobin. So listen, uh, folks, if you're in Ontario, you, you travel all over, you do paid gigs, uh, private parties, uh, clubs and stuff. Um, they can find you on Facebook, right? Um, yeah. Tobin Spring and then on YouTube as well. 
are you on Instagram or anything like that? Um, yeah, yeah, I do, but I don't, I don't have much to do with that one. So, okay. okay. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yes, I, I'd say Facebook or the YouTube channels probably where I, I can be more perfect. Safe. And maybe listen, Wade is all excited. He knows I'm a really, really good triangle player. Um, oh, wow. maybe we could get together one night and I can play triangle while you, uh, do your thing on stage. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, listen, this has been a real pleasure, man. You're super talented. Uh, one more song uh, you play us out. Uh, we, could you do one more yeah. for us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. This has been uh, a lot of fun. I got to see that movie, Bandits, too. That looks you, like you really do. And Faking a Murderer is off the charts, too. So uh, you got to check them both out. And and I'd be re I I'm going to say it again because people are making fun of me. I'm saying it's my new uh, thing. I'd be remiss if I didn't let you know. Tony messaged me. And said that uh, first song you did, the, uh, the cover of uh, Chris Stapleton, was absolutely amazing. So you got a new awesome. fan in Tony yeah. Napo. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate yeah. that. There you go. <laughs> well, All right, well, great having you, man. Tobin, thank you so much. It's Bonzi Live. This is Tobin from Huntsville. If you're looking for a guy, musician, this is your man. All right. Thanks very much, Bonzi. You bet. You're a beauty. Okay. Uh, yeah, I might as well do, uh, you know, I talked about some. Um, you know, the blues and stuff being a big influence on me. So I'll, I'll do some kind of bluesy. Let's see here. You got me running. You got me hiding. You got me running. Hide, hide, run. Any way you want a little road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me doing what you want. I'm going up, I'm going down, I'm going up, down, down, up, and away you go on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me doing what you want, baby, what you want me to do. guy my guy well listen mister you certainly don't suck on that guitar that's for sure um <laughs> it's been a real treat i haven't seen you in like four months so that yeah. was a real pleasure i hope you'll join us again uh down the road in a few months and and play some different songs for us people in the comments they they love you dude um so it'd be awesome to have you back if you're willing i mean absolutely thanks again for having me yeah thanks so much tobin Folks, that's Tobin from Huntsville. Uh, you can check him out, YouTube. 
Facebook and he's for hire. Go check him out. And for argument's sake, you're a firefighter too. Yes, Tobin, just please say yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There you go, Tamara T. I told oh, you. I told you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tobin. This is awesome. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to come on the show. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Yeah, have a great night. Peace. That's Tobin, everybody. Huntsville, like I said, go check him out. If you're if you got a wedding, you just want to have a party, maybe a Christmas party, maybe a New Year's Eve party. Uh, hire him up. You can also, if you're up in the Huntsville, uh, what do you call that? Gravenhurst, Bracebridge area. Be sure to go check check out the Tobin Spring Band Friday, this Friday, November 25th, 8 to 11 uh, at the Royal Canadian Legion on Veterans Way in Huntsville. So there you go. Boom. Awesome. Love that guy. It's a treat. Wow. Back to back bangers tonight. Tony Napo. We had Tobin. Um, Glassy, let's do our thing real quick. We had a. You know why I had actually know what. Up tonight, that's, but they're that's only going to play a few. <laughs> that's six. Uh, plus what do you got way, for huh? us tonight, Mister? For, let's go ahead. Yeah, it's you know it's pretty funny. Uh, that's six plus there is by the way. Oh seven, I guess now. What mine don't count. I don't think so. But um, <laughs> only yours count. I had no idea where Huntsville actually was. I didn't know if it was. Be it's between Toronto and or um, North Bay. I didn't know that. It is. Fun fact. Yes, it is. As BC guys, as BC guys, we have no idea where anything is east of Alberta. So, well, if you looked you know, at a fucking go. map once in a while and weren't so uh, in love with your own little province because you got all the pretty mountains and stuff, uh, maybe you'd know where it was, Glassy. Just saying. You're a little busy by the time because you got time for this shit. That's your time up, my friend. Like, dude, so don't talk on. to me about it. <laughs> you know who actually sent me that? I think it was Sarge that hmm. brought that to my attention. So, uh, she, listen, she told I, you not I, to I swear. do not have time to read that nonsense, but that was too she, good not to give up. Come on, maybe she told laugh. you she she told you not to swear, but yet she gave you videos of dolls marrying people. <laughs> That's that's concerning, but going back to your earlier episodes of tripping with Bonds, you know, I can understand where she's coming from. So there you yes. go. <laughs> yeah. So let's go into videos here quickly. We want to wrap it up. Uh, this is a good one. This is a baseball fight. You know, I mean, you see a lot of fights in baseball every once in a while. You want to tee this one up? Yeah, you certainly do see them, don't you, Glassy? But you don't see them in this manner. So um, usually a pitcher hits the guy at home plate, guy at home plate charges the pitcher. In this case, Mm, it's sort of role reversal. Buddy smashes a home run, and watch what happens. Vean el tablazo tremendo de Castro, que se queda contemplando su batazo. Vuelve a echarle una mirada a la cueva de Caribe. Y ya salta. Ahí evidentemente sí, salta los comentarios. De una vez. <laughs> ¿Cómo lo intercepta? I told you, bitch. And then he gets popped. <laughs> y después Good Cabrera cae people, en el suelo. By the way. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. I love that uh, video. Wait, wait actually not, is. In, but. I think it was his fourth home run of the night, Glassy, if, I, if mm. I'm using my little Spanish words and stuff. And he did stand there and admire that and saunter down and then did the old bat flip and you could see where Buddy got a little upset and had enough of Buddy's shenanigans for the night. So that was pretty awesome to full on clothesline. And then he stood there and he's like, yo, how do you like me now? And then pop, Buddy gets pout, plowed while he's standing there doing the how do you like me now pose and goes friggin' tits up. It's awesome. Anyways, love that video. What do go. we got next? So our next one, I'll tee this one up, I guess. It's yeah, a beautiful ahead. photo. Uh, everybody loves a good dog video. I have Milo here. Um, you have Tucker. And uh, if you if your dog loves enjoying watching TV as much as uh, Milo does, at least. Uh, does Tucker like watching TV? Is He'll watch it once in a while. He's not big on it, though, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But okay. this dog certainly is. a eh, Glassy? Yep. <laughs> he had perfect timing on Buddy. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> like, you gotta play that here. again. This is watch the timing. There, let's start from the beginning. Perfect timing. <laughs> Where'd that damn ball go? Where'd that damn ball go? <laughs> that's awesome I love that one. dogs are the most incredible amazing humans uh or, or things not humans um 
creatures on this planet is what I meant to say. All right, uh, one, two more, and then yeah, one, one two more. Go. Yeah, sure. All right. What yeah, this is a good one. Uh, sticking with the dog theme. Uh, <laughs> I, I did laugh the rear end off at this one. This is a golden. And uh, you know when you run up behind someone and just go, oh, my God. They're right behind you. And they just start running for no reason. Well, this is uh, with a dog. And, um, yeah. It takes it, it takes it to a new level. Hey, bro. Out here, man, to... Damn, it's a paint, bro. It's a paint, bro. It's a fake dog, bro. It's a fake dog, bro. It's a paint, bro. Oh, boy. What's up? Hey, I can post this, bro. Yeah. It's a paint, bro. I think the best is when he chased what? him up the fence. Oh, uh, Glassy, my f I got a headache right now from laughing at these videos so hard. Did you see how fast that mofo was gone and over that fence? Oh, yeah. Like, there is pranks and scaring people, and then when you actually get the sound on your phone and a big dog, that's a whole new level of awesomeness on, on prank level. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. That was a good fight. Hey, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Buddy, bro, My... you got me there, bro. You got me. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> One more. I love it. I love videos like that. Um, do you want to go with what – do, what do you want to do? You want to go with uh, Midget? You want to go with the Midget? Uh, okay, let's do that and then one more, and then we're, we're out of here. Because the Midget's uh, okay. funny. This the is Midget's first. funny. Uh, so this is hilarious. This is mine uh, for anybody, you know, James P. White. And we'll drag him into the conversation because he is a little person. Uh, he would totally do this, and I could totally see him doing this. Uh, watch this. You out, and here she comes. Oh, that was Goldberg. Oh, no. Spear. That was a Goldberg spear. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Little person, sorry. <laughs> We're going to need that replay of the Goldberg Forever. Spear. We're going to need the NFT that. Here comes the Spear Goldberg. Oh! <laughs> I think that might have actually been a charge. Little I, Jimmy would, would could only dream of getting a gig like that because the only uh, people I've seen him wrestle are big, ugly, fat, mm -hmm. hairy men that he dives into. I know. Uh, I know. I've seen these like videos that. and it's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh anyways too funny uh love little jimmy uh what else let's do one more and then we'll wrap this up sure uh the u.s uh thanksgiving yeah. holiday is this coming thursday is that correct you corrected me like four yeah, times yeah, you're no, out i thought it was monday no, but no, apparently no, it's thursday. I, I i i'm gonna throw you under the bus here um because i don't know how you get this wrong but because every fucking american thanksgiving bud there's three or four three football games on Every Thursday of American Thanksgiving. Old Glassy here says thought uh, Thanksgiving was yesterday in America, but no, it's not. It's tomorrow. Uh, I don't care. Oh, That's Thursday, the sorry, problem. Thursday. I just, I don't care. That's the problem. That's... Uh, but you should. America. Our brother America. down there, our American friends. Um, yeah. Anyways, they get to cook their turkey on Thursday, and this little fella wanted to get in on the action. Um, I think he regretted it. Watch this. Okay, so I'm gonna get the turkey ready for my mom to cook. Nathan thinks he can handle this. <laughs> yep, you gotta get all that out. Is it boy or girl? Boy or girl turkey? I have no idea. <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. What? <laughs> Nathan. I love the horse. Nathan. I'm here, the boy. Nathan. Nathan. Look. Anyway. It almost sounds like you. It's, I think watching a guy ju uh, chug a 
jar of piss is way worse. But um, listen, I can understand why the little fella got a little uh, verklempt there or choked up, if you will. <laughs> mm. Again, you're back to the uh, you're back to the piss things and marrying dolls and <laughs> all that. I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of questions, dude. It's been a while, and I used to be back finally. I know, I know you really miss me, Glassy. I missed you too, buddy. It's been nice. Mm -hmm. Episode two nineteen. We got it in the books. It's nice to be back. I thought this was a pretty fun show. A little rusty. Was... I'm not gonna lie. I, you know, the, uh, I was just stammering and when watching my. You, you called me out in the private chat. Watching my fucking. Uh, well, you're like, well, um, so but, how do you feel about well, the color weird red? Setup in your, right now. Blah, blah, blah. Why don't you? Why don't you? You know, did you want to? The teleprompter behind the, the screen I'm, here. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, but yep. thanks. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much, everybody, for watching and tuning in. This yes. has been a great show. I had so much fun. You guys. Huge shout out, Tony Napo. How funny is that? That was dude? awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Such a great guy. He's been on so many shows. We really didn't get into to a lot of it because we, we got sort of sidetracked in the other conversations. Um, but honestly, guys, you got to check out Bandits. It's going to be out on the streaming services very shortly. I had the pleasure of seeing it in the theater with him. It was awesome. You'll love it. Cool. Um, and then Faking a Murderer, he's in it as well. Make sure you go check that out, too. Not really a Christmas mm -hmm. movie, but hell of a movie nonetheless. It's Tony Napo. He was a kick-ass, awesome guest tonight. And Tobin, Absolutely. my God. how and Tobin was awesome. Guy, Tobin was awesome. Right? Everybody Tobin was them. awesome. Everybody loved both guests tonight. It was really a pleasure to have them both. What a great way to kick off being back. Um, we will, I promise now. I sorted my shit out. I feel better. We're going to be back on a regular yeah. basis. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm really looking forward to Do you want to tee up? Guests. Dude, Chris Do Coster want... from Glorious Sons is coming on soon. That's a huge get. Um, and we got some other amazing actors from... from and firefighters. Canada, actually. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. <laughs> um, and, and we'll just see how it goes. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I feel good. Nice to see your pretty face, bud. And uh, you did a great job. Nice to see you, too. Yes, right Thanks on. So Much love, guys. Thanks for tuning in. The show is brought to you tonight by Don't Trip Your Fine. Uh, it's my youngest son, Brad's clothing line. You got to go check this out. Actually, I got a toque right here. Check that out. It's a cool little logo. Uh, Don't Trip Your Fine. You can get toques, black, white. You can also get amazing T-shirts, hoodies, stuff like that. All different colors, styles. You can get acid wash. You can get tie-dye. You can get it straight up. Um, there it is right there. My boy modeling his stuff. It's called Don't Trip Your Fine. Great new sponsor. Love that guy. Love my son. He's in Toronto right now living, going to acting classes. Um, and Tony loves him. Tony's a big fan of Brad. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. And the show is also brought to you by Scramble Clothing. Um, Scramble Golf. Go check him out. Scramble Clothing online. Scramble with a K. I got this amazing shirt right here, too. This is one of my favorites. These guys are killer. Look at that. Scramble Clothing. Sick T right there. Um, they do, they got so many amazing things. They got beach wear, surf wear, golf wear, men's, ladies, kids. Go check it out. Scramble with a K, scrambleclothing.com. It's been an amazing show. It's been nice to be back. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Really missed you all. Um, PTSD and depression is a bitch. If you're feeling shit and down, make sure you reach out to somebody. It's my only advice. I should start taking my own advice. Um, but better talking about it than doing uh, so anyways, thanks again, everybody. Well, Wicked Guest coming up Thursday. Music, another amazing musician, uh, Paul Churchill. You thought Tobin was good? Paul Churchill's is uh, amazing as well. He's not very um, uh, social media savvy, but he's an amazing musician. You guys will love him. And then also a uh, surprise guest Thursday that uh, is coming up as well. It's been Tripping with Bonzi, Bonzi Live, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all that social media nonsense. Love you. Missed you. Glad to be back. Be safe. See you Thursday. Bye. The hell of a way to go out. I want that when I die. She's Rubbing got the fine line window. between pain respects and necrophilia. <laughs> She's riding the fine line between pain respects and necrophilia. What was that?
was very strange. It was very weird. It was peculiar. It was kind of amusing. Yes, it was rather funny. It was incredibly funny. I loved it. Hilarious. <laughs> Wonderful. 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 Wonder